My name is Craig Ponsford and I'm a bread baker and I have a small little bakery in San Rafael that's called Ponsford's Place. It was around 1990. I worked in the commercial fishing business in Alaska and the oil spill happened, a big oil spill that kind of changed Alaska dramatically. So I came home and I had a pocket full of money and I was spending it quickly and I decided hey, I should do something, so I went to culinary school. While I was going there, I had to have a job, so I worked at a bakery because I could be working graveyards and then go to school. And I fell in love with the craft of baking and decided not to be a chef and be a baker. I'm still really good at making a lot of product because I'm very organized and Alaska really set me up to understand how to process something. In that case, it was fish, and turns out fish and bread have a lot of similarities. The racks, the boxes, the tables, all, all these things are very similar in a weird way. <laughs> the Coupe de Monde de Boulangerie, and uh, it's the World Cup, it only happens about every four years, and uh, it, it's held in France, and it has uh, countries from all over the world. I went to France to see uh, the World Cup a year before I opened my first bakery, seeing the competition and seeing the uh, trade show that it was at in France and being in Paris uh, was a huge, huge influence on my career. The decisions I made on what I was going to make in my bakery and how I was going to make it and uh, influenced me so much that I was like, I want to I wanna be in that competition. I competed in 96 uh, with the American team and we won the category that I was doing which was baguette and so winning the baguette in France is, was a really big deal. Uh, the first Americans to win that award and my life changed you know, from that day on. I've been uh, pursued from all over the world to show them how to make my baguette. <laughs> I'm really good at baguette. I can do them behind my back, kind of like Jimi Hendrix with the guitar. So. <laughs> town of Sonoma. I had a bakery there for 17 years. I consider myself an artist and so uh, what I really love doing is baking beautiful breads and not having the pressure of all the other things that come with a 20,000 square foot bakery. You know, 15 trucks, 100 employees, 24-7 operation. Um, I loved it. I was driven. I really loved it, but uh, it burned me out pretty, pretty well. Ponsford's Place was about just getting grounded, being, being who I truly am, a baker. Ponsford's Place that I got, um, it's not in a, a popular area, it's in a, in a neighborhood, and so the cost to be there is less than if I was on the plaza or, you know, the main street. Most of my breads take about 36 hours to make, so the morning before when I'm there, I'm making the first part of those breads, and then when I come in at night, I finish them. And uh, they take about seven hours from when I mix them to finish, so I start mixing right when I show up, and I'm baking bread all the way to nine in the morning when I open, and, and also finishing my croissants and uh, uh, such. get there around 9.30 or 10, and I leave around noon or one the following day. So that's kind of a normal day. It's an intense situation um, um, that um, I do because I love it. That's the only reason that I do it. My customers at, in San Rafael at Ponsford's Place are unbelievably loyal and 
and uh, uh, I've, I've cultivated this email list um, because my bakery was always open different days, different hours. I never really make the same thing twice. I send them out and sometimes it's only every six weeks now and my customers line up almost two hours before I open and I hear them singing out there, you know, and this is Marin County. You get the email and you mark your calendar, you clear it so that you can hopefully be one of the first in line as I did this morning. I rearranged my schedule to be here. My name is Jean Zerudo. I live here in San Rafael, California, and I've been coming to Ponsford's Place before it became more of a pop-up. It was a daily thing. The Marin Independent Journal ran an article on Craig's work here and being gluten sensitive, gluten free, I was very curious to see what it would be like to enjoy baked goods that might not make me feel ill. People don't know that I know how to make white flour croissants because they've never seen them at Ponsford's Place. So I can make a beautiful, fluffy, layered, gorgeous croissant, um, but they don't tend to make people feel so great. I love using all the wheats. I'm not anti-white flour, um, but Ponsford's Place, I really, I opened it with the intention of not using any white flour only because I was really good with white flour. So I eliminated that medium so that I would really learn how to use a medium that I wasn't good at. And uh, so that was the intention. And, but the intention turned out to be this incredible like food that I didn't know would affect people so powerfully. Nobody's making that kind of food, so people really, um, are thankful because it uh, helps them feel better. When I first opened my bakery, I was buying flour from that company. It was called Justos. That was 30 years ago or so. And so all the bakeries in the Bay Area have been buying flour, sugar, salt, uh, any kind of ingredients bakery needs from the Justos. Well, the, those brothers sold their business in the, like 2006 and uh, the remaining Justos were not happy about that sale and so they opened this place up in Petaluma called Keith Justo Baking Supply, which is the son of one of the gentlemen that originally opened it. The amount of skill sets to really understand farming and, and milling is something that takes years and lots of knowledge and, and so Keith brought that knowledge here, um, brought his nephew in, Nikki and they all joined, made it an employee-owned company. They have farmers in 10 different states that are part of the company, and then we have this distribution center, which is here, that delivers to about 500 customers within 100 miles of Petaluma. Um, so almost every bakery or granola place or even breweries uh, and distilleries are buying grain from us. They're a little confused about the central milling part, um, because that's the umbrella company. And then the school is called the Artisan Baking Center. The primary thing I do is I teach professional bakers here that are customers and just help them uh, with the fundamentals that most of us don't receive as bakers in the United States. We go and we work for somebody and we may work for two or three different bakeries, but we still don't necessarily understand the fundamentals of baking, which is not a mystery. It's uh, very clear if you're taught them. And so we try to um, help provide that fundamental education to our customer base, just so they have more control over what they're doing in their bakeries. So it's super cool. And uh, I teach them and they get all excited and they all get to know each other. And you know, it's a bonding experience. And I'm the one that gets to receive it while the ones that have built this place are busy working in offices and uh, wheeling and dealing flour. And um, I feel like the luckiest employee here.
my bakeries have always turned out to be a community center. I think that's what bakeries are for a lot of towns. You know, it's a place where people get their coffee and they meet every morning and such. So I've always seen it as something that makes living so much more better. <laughs> It wasn't until Ponsford's place opened in that neighborhood that the neighbors even knew each other. So I would say to them, I'd be like, do you know um, Jim right behind you? And they'd be like, no, never met. And I was like, they're your next door neighbor. <laughs> so Ponsford's place really provided an amazing movement in my hood of people actually getting to know, having a community. Uh, it's amazing. My customers actually know each other even, you know, and it's really sweet. They do put a limit on some of the goods on how many we can buy and I think we all naturally are considerate uh, to make sure that there's enough for the rest of us. We, uh, tongue in cheek, we call ourselves the bread line uh, and when, when Ponsford is baking you can rest assured that this thing will be sold out before it's published closing time at one o'clock today. I'm still doing it, even though it kills me. It's a big, intense day, uh, but I really, really am so thankful for them. There's a line the whole time until I sell out, and they're so patient, and they're so sweet, and they're all saying thank you, and yelling at me in the back as they see me clean, and it's just an amazing scene. It's really, really, like, special, really special. <laughs>